And we're back with them wall tactics. We're here to talk about our reactions to the rise of the green tide. The orc codex has been revealed. The data sheets are out. Auspacs and tactics hit us with the nuclear bomb. But we're here for it because we tough and we hard as nails. Now, boys, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a very competitive guest that I'm excited for. He's going to start us off and give us his competitive outlook, his niche you know, way of thinking as he went 5-0 at a recent GT with a Green Tide-esque type of list. So I think it's a perfect uh, outlook to talk about it since Green Tide's been the one that people aren't sure about as well. He's going to give us his little overview perspective and a little teaser for what's to come Wednesday. And so let us introduce, uh, and, oh, and then after that, we'll go over, we have a bunch of slides and presentations for our actual interpretation of how we perceive everything our views and reactions of each detachment, the units that are good about it, the pros and cons for each detachment, and then we'll end it off with a couple lists that I use as examples, and then we'll hit the chats with the Q&A. So if you're in the chat or you become a part of the chat, feel free to jump in, and I'll, I'll stay here for hours talking to you gets for a get, all right? So don't worry about it. There's going to be a long one, so get ready to get stuck in, lads. But first, let's start with our guest. Here we have Steven. So Steven recently, Steven, how do you say your last name? Pampering. Pampering. So Stephen Pampering went five at recent GT. He was running double knob with wall banner, 60 boys, two battle wagons, two kill rigs. It was an amazing list. It was on table uh, tactical turtles live stream. I was really into it. So we're gonna hear what our get Steven has to say here, and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do on Wednesday. So Steven, I know like all you've been excited about the codex. You have a weird outlook yeah. for the fact that you decided I'm gonna bring double knob with wall banners, wagons, kill rigs, and people don't even people don't even rate kill rigs to a certain extent, right? So I thought you would be a fun person to get on here with your unique outlook. And when the orcs were at their lowest, you brought them up to a winning GT. So I really appreciated that, right? So yeah, no problem. So uh, and you have a coaching service. So after that, you know, if anybody likes what you got to say. We'll send them your way. So let's start with the detachments real quick in mm -hmm. summary. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. In case you aren't, we'll hit them and then we'll see what Steven has to say about us, a couple of them, right? So first we have the Bully Boys detachment. You have two turns of wah. This is a pretty much exclusive to Mega Knobs. Knobs and War Bosses uh, are going to be get, getting benefits from this detachment. Of course, you can use other units, but only Knobs and Mega Knobs will be utilizing those stratagems. Then you have the green tide. The green tide is essentially exclusive to boys. Boys will be getting their five up invulns, but any orc unit that's 10 models or greater will be able to reroll ones. The strats also seem limited to just boys. Then we have the dread mob detachment, which is a off the wall, outrageously complex combinations of damage throttling units, as well as odd durability. It's very fun, very flavorful, and very hazardous. Then we have the cult of speed, it's very different to the ninth edition version. More about movement than damage output. It's going to take a bit of a learning skill curve for that one. The big hunt. Everybody's excited about utilizing their beast snaggers, being able to tear down things that aren't just sitting around with the two up armor save. Uh, but still, it's very exclusive to beast snaggers, as most of the detachments are. Yet, very flavorful with their uh, enhancements and some of their stratagems, of course. Uh, and then we have the Warhorde Index Detachment. Not very much has changed, but a little bit has. Sustained ones is always good for orcs in a high volume. So, Steven, let's start with the Bully Boys. How you feeling about them thickies? Uh, I think the Bully Boys are going to be clearly the strongest of the new detachments. Um, definitely, you know, like you guys were saying, from a, from I'm looking at this from a competitive standpoint. Um, I'm actually kind of disappointed because I think it is the strongest, and it's not mm -hmm. my favorite way of playing, and I feel mm -hmm. like I'm going to be really shoehorned into playing a certain type of list if i want to do well and that's that's never fun um but i think it's going to be i think it's going to be really strong um we're going to need to see the exact wording of that second log um mm. how it works because if it's um if it's just like a full log or if it's just on particular models in the units or if it's on the whole unit mm. or can you call it first like can mm. i just say have a little log turn one and just you know send a knobs out um is it mm -hmm. going to give me advance and charge on my squig hog riders 
attached to a wart. Like it seems like it should, but we'll need to see the actual wording, I think, to 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 really feel comfortable about you know all the different options that you're gonna have. That's there. a good point because Ospec just showed leaks and he didn't have exact words for yeah. everything. Data sheets shown pages from the book. Wording is so important in competitive 40k to really know how to maximize the detachment's abilities. But speaking of how you do like to play, what's up with the green tide detachment? How are you feeling about our our basic battle line boys? <laughs> I, I really I really want to like it, but again I'm looking I'm looking at that detachment right above it, going I could just have a five up invul for two turns and also advance and charge plus one attack and plus one strength. Like ugh, that seems pretty strong. Um, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with the boy like with the green tide detachment, but I I think the strongest armies, and again, this is, you know, hey, you can run whatever you want and you're still going to, and you can still go three and two, four and one. If you're trying to go for the five and oh, you might be forced into certain things. But like, I think this is going to really struggle into a lot of armies because it doesn't have the damage buffs. Because the boys, like the reason that the boys worked in, in uh, I'm a, you know, toot my own horn here, but the, the reason that the boys worked in my list is because I had a knob banner attached to them so that yeah. they get the knob bonus. And then they have a kill rig to give them strength six. So this green tide, you're not going to have that knob bonus and you're not going to have the kill rig and you lost your sustained hits that you get in your whole war horde detachment. So like, I think there's going to be a lot of cases where you get there and you go, well, now what? Um, Hopefully so, I don't die. That's what you're that's pretty much what you're doing, right? You're also really yeah. hoping that you have enough CP to start re-rolling wounds, that your knobs are in the right place and that they go off yeah. and don't just whiff, because like you said, you don't have sustains. Um re-roll wounds is uh, super real. Yeah. Definitely real. stoked about that. Like I think that'll be a big thing, but I just you know, uh, going through these attachments, I don't know if any other orc players are going through this, but I know I have been of going. Man, we had a really good index detachment, didn't we? Like that yeah. was a really good detachment. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, oh well, you know, if I combine that with the plus two advance and chart, nope, that's in my main detachment. I don't yeah, get exactly, that anymore. Right? Oh shoot. Um, oh. So I think the green tide is is going to be like that. I think it, it may end up being run better in in like literally just unit for unit. Um, just a bunch of boys might end up being better in a bully boys detachment or a war horde detachment, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. And speaking of what about the dread mob? This is another one that people are seeing as competitive yet very flavorful. I think there's a real line and data sheet importance to which way you're looking at that. If you're thinking I get yeah. to run a bunch of my death dreads, you're probably a little bit more casual. If you're thinking I'm going to run a bunch of grot tanks, you're thinking highly competitive. Where are you at on this detachment? So I do like the cans. Uh, I have a bunch of them painted up. I actually went four and one or finished. I forget. I, I finished like sixth or seventh at the Michigan GT running cans and Def Dread in uh, last edition. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I like them. Um, I think uh, I don't have the, I don't own the models for the Morkonauts. I don't really like how they look. They're how dare clunky. you? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, they never, they never drew me. So like, I haven't really spent a whole lot of thought, frankly, uh, uh, frankly, on on this detachment. Um, I've been looking at it for more of. Uh, I like all the little vehicles and stuff, so I've been looking a little bit more at the next one, the Cult of Speed. Um, you, if you don't mind me, uh, uh, sure, go stealing to. your thunder. I'm really excited about the Cult of Speed. One. Okay. I think um, I think once the Mega Knob nerf eventually comes i'm just i'm just go ahead and call yeah, for sure. right Go now for just like Very right important. now I'm, i feel like i'm just gonna have to show up to any event with at least 12 mega knobs and like hum dumb here i go um mm -hmm. because it, it, the four up feel no pain i mean custodies were devastating to the meta yeah. for a once per <laughs> game phase four up feel no pain phase. and we're like what if we just had that for two battle rounds <laughs> like that's the whole battle round dude. the whole battle round and 40k is so front heavy on the first three turns of the game you're essentially yeah. like turn two wild turn three wild come get some then right. my dad probably not you are though yeah it, so true. i think the cult of speed i think it, there's the assault ramp so you can get one of your you know you're gonna have one 20 man boy squad or a knob squad or whatever you like that can actually assault ramp mm -hmm. um and then just running a bunch of bikes and coptas, getting a plus one to wound. You have a bunch of way to buffs your shooting. Like, I think there's a lot of fun stuff to do there. Um, but uh, oh, and then the big one, at least for me, that I'm definitely starting with would be triple sniper buggies 
actually being able to work how God intended, uh, excuse mm -hmm. me, Gork and Mork intended. Mm -hmm. um, because the fact that there was like, oh, you can advance them. And then you're like, I can teleport. And you're like, well, now what? What am I, I getting engaged? Here and die? Yeah, <laughs> like this does nothing for me. Um, but the fact that they can actually like participate in the game um, really opens up a lot of options, I think, for that army. Because there's so many factions that really rely on having characters in squads that you can see and don't like eating essentially a las cannon to the face that has precision um so i think that'll open up a lot of a lot of play i'm really excited about I that i think one. highly competitive players like i seen brad chester was excited about this one too um i'm really excited because they understand how to maximize movement they understand how to yeah. maximize move blocking they know how to prioritize when to do damage and when to score and stuff and i think that's where this is going to fall off for mid-tier or casual or newer players when they try to lean into this with their max to def copters or they try to lean into this with just whatever buggies and trucks they have, they're going to struggle with this. I, I Even though I can yeah. understand why competitive players are highly excited about this, just baseline, I think it has a really big learning curve. But it you doesn't know what have doesn't, the raw output. You know, it doesn't have a much of a learning curve is the big hunt. So the big <laughs> hunt seems like it's pretty straightforward. Uh, how do you feel about this, the big hunt? I I think it's going to really depend on what they will have to see what they do with the data sheet for the uh, the squeak hog riders. Um, I think that's going to that's going to be the main part of this, right? Because this is the one that has the scouting squig like you can scout with them. Yeah. So if you just if you just add up the points from right now, what it is, I think a full unit of squig hog riders plus the war thing is uh, the 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 war squ uh, on squigasaur. Um, mm -hmm. It's like 550, like 575 or something points for that unit. Yep. If you were just going to like add it all up on how it is. So if, if you're trying to scout like a 600 point unit, I mean, that could be challenging. I feel like to, to I don't know. And then even the, 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 the prey hunt thing, it doesn't even do that much. Like it makes you AP two, which is awesome. But I think... I, I don't know what the meta looks like. Like I'm thinking, okay, if I'm, you know, custodies where they just have one tank in the back and a bunch of infantry. Cool. I, I just don't have a detachment. Then exactly. I'm just, I'm just playing with war horde, but none of the cool strats and no sustained. To Ugh. summarize, it can be somewhat worked around at a top table, like top table players, high level events. I would say something like a one K game though, or 1500 or casual when people have a hodgepodge yeah. of units, they yeah. can more likely get benefit from this. But when it does go off, it's going to feel really, really good, I think. And yeah. as we spoke about the Ward Horde Index, the War Horde Index, we already understand. I think most people understand how great it is because we've been using it. But yeah. we were pretty privileged to have such a powerful index attachment. It didn't seem like it changed too much. Um, and the strats, the strats are just amazing. Not having flash gets will also be kind of interesting as well. Um, but I think we should be grateful for that. And anybody that's new, uh, maybe a little casual, and they're a little overwhelmed by all the choices and they want to see things play out, I would strongly advise just stick to the War Horde for now because it's still so good and we still have to readjust to the new data sheets that are coming out um, and maybe some synergies and keywords. So I think we were blessed to have it. We know it's pretty good. Um, I still think maybe two of these detachments are going to prioritize them on high top table competitive play, though. Yeah, and and uh, you know, speaking of the you know the total, you know the, the war horde that four up feel no pain token having a death killer with a four up feel no pain won me so many games. Having yeah. plus two movement on an infantry squad won me so many games. Yeah, you know, it, 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 there's so many good things. Here about we that go. Detachment. Yeah, so you getting gas or random models down the field quicker, and people are like, "What just happened?" The the boy knobs jump out of a truck. Oh, follow me, lads, just going in. It, yeah, yeah. I think um, I, you know, talking about the difference between like the, the codex, um, you know, an index, and this will be probably a good lead. And then you guys want to do the rest of your show, but mm -hmm. um, you know, orcs uh, in my experience have a really big problem with turn one. Um, mm -hmm. That's been the biggest issue that I've had. And the way I solved it was the walk banner. Yes. And I so, saw it in our tier list video from like six months ago when I raided the knob with wall banner. I said he's gonna be the answer for if you're going second 
um, yeah. or trying to maintain pressure because calling the wall in the battle round and such is going to be the detriment. So you're the only person that I really seen that maximized that at the top table. So I really loved him. That's why you got a little key to my gorky heart right now, you little. <laughs> I appreciate it. It took me a while to find it. I will say it, I was mm -hmm. slow learner on that one. I jumped on the death kill immediately, though. That was like the first thing I put in the list at the beginning of the of the edition. But um, yeah, I think we losing the knob banner, I think, is going to make the turn one issues even more apparent. I think it's yeah. going to be. And the only way to solve it that I see with what we have is in the cult of speed with the assault ramp and the bully boys. So that's why those those are the two detachments that I'm taking very, seriously. Very good point. And the rest I'm I'm kind of like, hey, if someone else gets clever and they come up with something like I'll look at it, I'll, I'll take it seriously. But I think I got to focus, you know, how I think and, and how I work on it. Those are probably the two detachments. That's a good way to look at it. Focus on forward. how you like to play and what problems you had and tried to solve just like we don't have the flash kits anymore with bad ruck we can't even yeah. you know what i would sometimes do is in the early game use captain bad ruck a little bit try to kill some things down dwindle them down the pressure stuff like that we don't even have that to shoot away screens or delaying units or scouts yeah so it is a factor and you know speaking of how you play um let's go into real quick before you get off and we go into our normal presentation on wednesday so in a couple days um we're gonna go over your turn one, two against Tao with Tactical mm -hmm. Tortoise's live stream, kind of like a side-by-side -side spike companion slash learning experience where we go over how you properly maximized the movement, the pile-ins, the consolidates, the taggings, um, the way you think of how do I pressure turn one, um, delay the enemy, continue to score with a somewhat elite army because everything you had was pretty high value mm -hmm. um you had big rigs you had wagons you had big bricks of boys you didn't have a lot of chaff um you didn't have you know there, it was a unique list so i think you know we're gonna go into that on wednesday give a pretty much lesson a little seminar is what you'll be doing I like that be, yeah it, seminar it'll be a good um introduction to your coaching service for anybody that really wants to get over that edge as well and so how would they, you know, and they're in our discord. If you wanted to reach yep. you on Facebook I'm or Hannibal discord, Barca in, uh, in discord, if you can find me on uh, Facebook, um, I'll respond to there as well. And I'm Stephen dot at outlook.com. If you want to send me an email for sure. So we'll see you again, Stephen, in a couple of days, about approximately five days. We'll get into it. We'll get stuck in. I appreciate you joining us. Um, that was Problems. a nice different perspective, some points in there that I didn't consider when I was making the slide also. So I'm glad for that. Thank you. It's good food for thought as we move forward with the rest of this uh, Codex talk, because this is just the tip of the iceberg or the tip of the chopper, however you want to look. There's at it. yeah, there's a lot. Maybe chip of the hunter spear. There you go. And there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic, Stephen. I appreciate you. Welcome to the rise of the green tide. We appreciate you in the great wall, Stephen. Yeah, Sounds you good. Much. You guys have a good night. Yes, sir. You too, man. All right, you get so that was Steven. Now we'll move into a little bit of our typical Wa tactics flavor talk a little bit here. Let's go into something new. I wanted to do a detachment rating scale, but not only have it as competitive rating, but I wanted to have it as a casual rating, right? Because people, you see the highest level players, like we just said, Steven, where he'll look at something and say, ah, well, I don't rate it because I can't win, go 5-0 and with it. Then you'll look at someone who rates it because they're like, I don't care. In my meta, I'm going hard. I'm winning. I can beat people because it's specific to this, this, and that. So we're going to talk about each detachment where I kind of rate them roughly without points, without all the context of all the detachment rules and keywords, right? Or uh, detachment rules and understanding of exactly how everything works. So this is a rough guesstimation. Once we get the points and everything like that, we'll be able to revisit this. I still feel about my rating scale, right? So starting off with the bully boys detachment like steven said and like we all agree the competitive rating for this for me right off the gate is nine out of ten where it stands unless mega knobs get a huge points increase that we don't see coming um let's say there are 50 points per model or something outrageous right like the four up feel no pain multiple pressures of wall um damage throttling having gazer to enjoy, appreciate makari's wall banner twice these are all going to be great assets for a competitive play it's, it's an enhancement of what most people have been currently playing with relying on the knobs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I totally see this being number one. But for the casual competitive rating, right, I would say it's a two. Why do I say it's a two? Well, you're very stricted and restricted on what units you can actually gain that actually gain the competitive, uh, sorry, they gain the detachment benefits, 
right? You could add a war boss to boys. You could run a beast boss on foot, but your knobs and mega knobs, as soon as you start playing this, playing them casually and putting them into your enemy, you're going to start running people over. Some people just can't handle and casual player learning the game or smaller games can't handle two turns of orc wall. Like that's a lot of pressure that I think orc players don't really understand sometimes as an enemy player is they just get a couple damage shots in you, you start touching them, you start tagging them, you start killing their screens, you get to do it again, you get a five up invul and everything as well. So casually, I say, you know, don't be surprised if you're bullying your local meta with that, right? Next, the dread mob. Now the dread mob competitive uh, competitive rating, I'd say right now, currently I'm going to rate it as about a seven out of 10. Being able to throttle damage in different kind of ways and shooting at range is something people won't see coming. Um, the fact that grot tanks are going to be obnoxious with their uh, <laughs> with their blast weapons and rockets and damage plus one is going to be amazing. You can kind of stat check people with moderately tough T6 small vehicles like grot tanks, killer cans. But then you can also throw in morganauts, gorgonauts. I specifically prefer gorgonauts but gorgonauts in there for now their shooting is relevant their melee becomes even more relevant um and yeah and then it's just people are going to figure this out a little bit spam something having grotz's battle line i'm sure is going to be a key as well to success as for casual rating though it's fantastic giving a nine out of ten so flavorful you get to run the death dreads how you want them you get to bring back the killer cans how you want them you can bring a bunch of different weapons that maybe you just want to go for a volume on the grot cannon and the grot zooka and you're just going for the volume strength five shots and hoping that you can pop strats on that to get the damage throttle that you need right so dread mob fantastic blowing yourself up people have an actual button that i see in our discord that are pressing for rolling the dice of d6 <laughs> that's fantastic it's going to be hilarious to get that um getting our walkers on the table will always feel good. So I rate that as a 9 out of 10 competitive rating. The War Horde competitive, like we just said, I'm going to rate this about a 7 as well. We had great stratagems. Um, sustain hits for orcs is just always going to be baseline fantastic because we have so much volume of attacks. And we really need that to maximize that. As for casual rating, I'm still going to leave it as an 8 out of 10 because the, the, the detachment is unrestricted for the most part. Every model that you own can pretty much benefit from this. Not too hard to think. And a lot of us have been using this. It's good for new players, um, stuff like that. So giving it a casual rating of 8 out of 10. The big hunt, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 for the, the rating. Um, the fact that you can kind of work around the detachment rule, the fact that it's very specific to I have to kill a vehicle or a the warlord or a monster. You know, some armies will just hide their warlord. Some armies will just hide their rhino um stuff like that for casual rating seven out of ten i think 1k games 1500 points um meta specific to you and your leagues might be important as well that's where we'll come more into play the green tide competitive rating i think you really have to maximize pylons consolidates movements um regening placing models correctly time clock management it's going to take only a handful of players are going to figure this out and be able to use it competitively and even then they're going to run into problems with um, like we said earlier with steven with turn one pressure lack of other walls from now with wall banners and anything that's really durable casual rating giving a three out of ten um, very specific and niche i think a lot of people are just going to get blown off the table when not utilizing utilizing it right the detachment abilities and strat abilities of having to be 10 plus is actually hard to get around if you're not very um well seasoned in the game and trying to learn use the blood surge to get in the combat is going to be a little bit more of a niche and skill for than people i think realize as well as painting it hobbying it up getting it on the table moving it hurting your back stuff like that casual three out of ten Call to speed, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 competitive rating. I think most competitive players are going to figure out the movement capability of this, the move blocking, with the throttle damage, with the score. Um, but in, in reality, the casual rating, I'm giving it a 4 out of 10, as I think people are just going to get their vehicles blown off the table, struggle to do damage. Now, when I'm, this is a good question I see. What do I mean by casual rating, competitive rating? I should start off that. Competitive rating is for a high-skilled People who play a lot, get a lot of reps in with the same list and will slowly tweak it and refine it, are looking to perform at a GT or successfully, consistently win RTTs. What I mean casual rating is if you don't have a specific um, collection, if you don't have, if you're not playing competitive against other very meta lists and you're just trying to get stuck in with your lads, you're just trying to, uh, you don't play consistently, so you don't really have time to learn the niche characteristics of the rules. Um, you have a very diverse collection, therefore you can't, you don't really appreciate 
the restrictions on all the detachments, that's where my rating of casual to competitive comes into play. That's the line there. But thanks for the question. That's a good point. I should have started with that. Now, we're going to start this with the breakdown of the pros and cons and what units to consider for each detachment. So this is my point of view without seeing points, uh, without getting all the wording for the detachments, just going based off all specs, tactics, essentially what he showed um, and what we know from the previews. So starting with units to consider. Yeah, number one in our hearts is the the Grottings. Grottings. Those Rockets, just a really good profile. Uh, strength nine minus two, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, three damage. Yep. Um, I mean, you can throttle that in any way that you need to. If you need... Um, push the button. Yeah, push the button. If you need some extra attacks, if you need to hit uh, high toughness targets, if you just need the extra damage, this is the, the detachment that's going to allow you to tweak whichever way you need to go. Yeah, they're going to benefit the most from most of the strats, such as uh, push it again for plus one damage, and uh, also getting rerolls to hit will great, greatly benefit them. They'll also appreciate Blast, and they most still have their reactionary move. Gorkonauts, I think, are going to be fantastic with their Galen Shua getting up to damage too, getting rerolls. Then they're actually strong enough in melee with their sweeps. Um, this is one of the walkers I think is going to be the most considered over a, a Morkonaut, over Death Dreads. Um, I think the Killican data sheet, the um, its ability took kind of a hit. The fact you could do mortal wounds to yourself, I don't appreciate that as much, considering that we're already having hazardous. Right. So now you're stacking too much mortal wound potential into yourself, in my opinion. To, um, it's still going to be good. I'm just saying you're gonna. I think you're gonna start off with Grot tanks, maybe one Gorkonaut, then fill up with Killicans, then Mech guns. I know most people aren't sure about Mech guns. Their data sheet uh, guns have changed a little bit. But the shock attack gun, hopefully it stays cheap. You can get that. It can also benefit from the strats, will, which for throttling, for um, rolling, and uh, trying to get on six if you want to get sustained or lethal. They'll appreciate that as well. Rerolls to hit. Um, so, yeah. So I what I like about the mech gun specifically is with this detachment, it lets you circumvent some of that randomness in the gun profile. Mm -hmm. So if you get that like strength six profile and you're trying to hit something a little tougher, you pick lethals. If you do the extra AP on one of those profiles, this is there for the taking too. So true. And usually mech guns are easy targets for enemies anti-tank at range. But when you have so many other targets that they want to prioritize that has reliable damage, the mech guns come more into I can sit back here and shoot and you're not going to prioritize me. And if you do, it's probably the wrong choice. So mech guns might become a sleeper if they're not overcosted. Now, the pros and cons. We're going to start off with the pros. All right, first one, high-value DACA, high-volume, and potential damage for rockets. As well as potential damage three and two. Um, like I said, with the Gatling shooter from the, Morcona, the Gorkana, that can get up to damage two. You can get rerolls to hit. It can get sustained. It can get lethal. Now, think about Ludas, who already have a built-in reroll to hit. Um, they will now, if you decide you put a mech with them, you can decide that I'm going to push the button for them. The damage increase strat doesn't, not that we know of, but the damage for the bigger shells, the bigger gets, we haven't seen that that's restricted to walkers yet. Um, if it is okay, but if it's just restricted to the mech keyword in a unit, I mean, Ludas can get up to damage three. If you stack that with the enhancement to ignore like cover, all of a sudden Ludas straight up rerolling. So you don't have to spend CP on rerolls, a decent Overwatch target. You know, that could, these are just weird volumes of damage and, and shots and everything that is unfamiliar to orcs other than the flash kits and outside of the flash kits. The next. Yeah, Gretchen gaining battle line. So that's a very unique one because now you can take, uh, I've seen some comments, uh, 120 mm -hmm. on, on a list. Yeah, we see lists that people are just running 120 max grot tanks, couple mech gun, guns, and a couple characters. Boom, that's your whole list, right? right? So some people will try to do that just to flood the table so that you can't charge into their grot tanks, so you can't charge and get the initiative into their killer cans. And if people leave them alone on the mid table, then they get to attempt to roll the CP for that. And in that strat, and in that case, you'll appreciate um, the more assured cp because you have more grots kind of touching targets and doing stuff stopping enemies from coming in from strategic reserves if you can if you decide to, to add zod in there and scout that way you can kind of fill up the table edges and force the enemy to just stand in front of you and get shot so grots might be interesting as right. battle line if you okay. decide to spam them 
that's going to synergize really well with that uh, conniving runts movement strategy. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> so if an uh, enemy ends within nine inches of you, not only do you get to move, but you do D3 plus mortal wounds on a four up. So that's mm -hmm. a little extra different from other reactive moves we've seen in the game. For sure. I think what's interesting is, and not that from what I read from it, it, it doesn't seem like it's restricted to you have to move away from the enemy. It just says you can make a normal move. So let's say you're sitting in a building and you're just they're not actually intended to shoot your grots but let's say a sachitar decided it's going to cut an angle for its high value damage shots and going to try to take a shot off on a grot tank well it's standing on an objective now he thinks it's going to hold it so you know he's going to try to bait you with some volume you can just go reactive move my grots now onto your objective now i actually have this objective at the start of my turn as well you just give me free primary so you can actually use it in a weird way as long as it's not restricted to move towards the enemy get in the way steal uh, an objective from them if they can't charge you, which would be a vehicle, a transport, mm -hmm. something like that. So it could be kind of cheeky to have a reactive move with grouts that are low value and be like, you want to charge it with your side star? You're not going to kill me all. I'm going to have this anyways. Right. And then you have <laughs> oh, and then you have primary later in the game, which could be a problem. So it's it, they're just very interesting by having grouts in that. Um, the enhancements are very fun in this detachment. I think they're some of the most useful ones. Right? Yeah. We have the Git Finder like we spoke about for ignoring light cover uh, as long as it stays cheap as can be five, 15 10 points that'd be fantastic right um as for the press it faster i know you guys are excited about that right in combo of possibly gaining two of the press the button abilities if you can get sustain and lethal then pop rerolls the hit from the strat then plus plus wound damage mm -hmm. plus one to wound plus one damage things get obnoxious um, of course, Ludas are still hitting on sixes, so I know you guys are hyped on Ludas, but hey, there's potential here. There's potential here. I'm never going to dissuade them because you never know. Someone might try to prove me wrong. Um, another one. Oh, let's see. We have Alan here. Let's see what you have to say, Alan. He says, is it likely that Luda is going to get buffed? I feel like it's strange that they're being included in the box of all the big things. Love your content. Appreciate you, Alan. Um, do I think they're going to get a buff? It seems like they their data sheet already came out, so we're already familiar with their data sheet. Um, as for it becoming buffed, I think the buff would be just keeping it kind of cheap on where it is. And I think their data sheet ability, did it change? I don't think so. I think their data sheet ability, I think they still just re-roll. Um, yeah, they just uh, got uh, their mm -hmm. unit size changed. Ah, that's what it changed. was, right? That's what it was. I knew something changed and I was like, what yeah, am so I forgetting? You can no longer take them in 15 Oh, They're limited to five to ten. So if anything, they didn't get a buff. <laughs> if anything, they didn't but get a buff. They're a little sad about that um but i still think looters are totally viable and acceptable for where they're at um with their points i was just making sure no they still get to reroll. they're still hitting on sixes so if anything they didn't get a buff um they stayed exactly where they're at which yeah, is so, fun so you might need that press it faster enhancement if yes. you're trying to get some efficiency mm -hmm. out of them yeah so I, I i like that and the shock attack gun with the shock attack gun is quite unreliable i will say for its shots and its damage but when you start popping strats on that luda mob you get some true value there as well. So speaking of the high damage, we get high damage from the walkers. So the fact that when you do get stuck in melee, killer cans, damage three, Gorkonot, high damage uh, six or sweeps, death dreads, damage three. And then you can choose to use the strats on that as well or just choose to uh, be hazardous again, pick sustain, pick lethal, or just straight up roll for it because it works for both. So now you're getting possible high quantity of those same, same damage shots that you would miss from the index attachment um, because you get sustained there again. So it still feels good. And having that much damage streak, which is one of our weaknesses in our detachment of um, orcs as a whole, not having anything greater than damage two was kind of a weakness. This is a way that yeah. we can kind of try to work around it. And I'm happy about that. Yeah, it's going to really help against those damage reduction rolls. Yes. And then you have great stratagems as a whole like we spoke we spoke he hit those a little bit re-rolls increased damage increased wound reactive moves stuff like that as for the cons right david yeah so uh, right now the meta is tooled for killing walker profiles and vehicle profiles so the lack of durability here um there is that one strat or, oh no that's a different, different. Mm -hmm. so they are lacking some dur durability here so they can be easily taken out by 
or other anti-vehicle weapons and you see, that you see in other armies? A lot of people are already stacking lethal innately built into yes. their armies. <laughs> um, something like a Leagues of Voltan being able to give plus one to hit, plus one to wound against these big bricks of armies, the units that you want to bring around to shoot with, and then they have weapons that are going to appreciate shooting at them. You know, Leagues of Voltan would just love to shoot at all your grot tanks if they can get a chance, but your grot tanks are shooting them back too, so... It's kind of a give and take, yet we know that the meta is built for killing thick stuff with high armor saves, considering Iron Storm and things yep. like that. And we got Tau coming around the corner, too. Oh, yeah, Can't we got Tau coming them. around the corner. Gets um, Lack of defensive buffs is a con to me. You're not. There's no way to increase your invulns or get a better baseline invuln for your big walkers and such like that, so you're just appreciating the invuln from the wall. Of course, some of these things already have good armor save, but I'm speaking specifically for... Um, anti-tank just shots that are minus four that some armies just have easy access to like space marines as a whole which a lot of people own space marines or play them casually so you're going to run into that if you decide to run this dread mob you're going to have to face armies that are going to be able to just annihilate some of your walkers and more happy thick models um hazardous can be detrimental if you start just oversaturating it and get unlucky you can start blowing yourself up across the table that makes it easier for the enemy prioritizing target if you take six mortal wounds they're going to just decide they're going to try to kill that unit right mm -hmm. um you kill a couple of your own killer cans that would suck kill a couple of your own grot tanks that hurts not only your output but it also lets the enemy go well you're close to dying i'm just going to finish you off you're closer to battle shock and um, grot tanks and killer cans have a leadership eight which is one of the things i don't love about them when you start taking big units so then if they get battle shock they can't appreciate the strats anymore right so right. it could be a compounding effect where being hazardous and becoming hurtful to yourself and weaker and getting closer to that battle shock test threshold will, will suck um that goes in tandem with the lack of defensive buffs too yes so mm -hmm. if someone's already chipping you four or five wounds here and there mm -hmm. and then you're hazardous you're taking yourself some wounds off yeah. uh, you can possibly um kill yourself yeah minus one damage is nice is, is definitely a nice one um it works for grot vehicles and non-titanic walkers so that will help to a certain extent, but just had to give that a shout out. Then we have, uh, you are quite reliant to a certain extent on just straight up basic mechs if you're running anything outside of a grot vehicle. So your walkers are essentially going to go, whatever the walker costs, I'm also going to need a mech. So you're paying the mech tax. They're also probably going to be holding your enhancements and they're very soft, squishy, weak. Um, once your vehicle's gone or if for some reason it charges away from them and you're out of position, they're going to bolt them down or whatever, right? Um, and then it's heavily terrain dependent. So some, you know, some of you gets, maybe you're playing at a local game store. They don't have a bunch of, uh, you know, great terrain. You can appreciate more of the dread mob. Maybe you have to face off against armies that you guys are going to shoot at each other. You can't just slog up the table. I get it. Uh, but if you're playing on GW terrain, it is quite tense. Your grot tanks are going to somewhat struggle to get lines of fire sometimes. The killer cans are going to start clogging up the lanes. Um, you're going to most likely want to reserve your Gorkonaut, for example. So those are the pros and cons for the Dread Mom. Then we got the Fighting Fedora. Shout out to my Gitch, JQ, Wicked Joe, Wappa, and Daggers for always inspiring the Discord. Let's go. That's true. And shout out to you for the five dollar super chat very gracious of you i appreciate you very generous and it seems like your grot revolution has come to life right so i love that um and we'll move on to the bully boys detachment Can you close that door my way because i think bugs. so we have the bully boys detachment has coming in like we spoke about earlier this seems to be the most powerful detachment having multiple was feels fantastic so let's see about units you want to consider with this I'm going to just right off the bat say that, in my opinion, my heart, my start, Gaz and Makari seem to be an auto take. If the units are just way too pricey, I can see them, Gaz and Makari, falling off as an auto take. But right now, in my heart, getting lethals, nice and a wah, seems fantastic. On fives. Um, on fives. Um, having a four up feel no pain surrounding Gaz and then Makari's two up invuln seems sick. And Makari now is going to benefit from the four up feel no pain if someone tries to precision him out. So that's hilarious and obnoxious. One, yeah. yeah. And then we have Solo Snickrot. Uh, Snickrot is now a loan up. Um, his redeploying is going to be useful and helpful. Um, I've heard people say, hey, maybe you want to drop a war boss and mega armor solo and use him to be dragger coming from reserve and act almost like a solo snick route to score that could be a thing too but i'm going to stick to snick route for scoring lone op i think he's going to help for how elite this army and lists are going to be and then of course mega knobs because four up feel no pains are obnoxious with armor of contempt the wall so it feels good 
pros and cons. Now, the double wall, most people just think I get to kill more, but what it is, a continuation of momentum. The, you know, uh, being able to consistently tell the enemy, I'm going to be there and I'm going to be there again with the next wave after you clear that one is going to be um, overwhelming for some people that just don't understand how to screen and prioritize targets. As for increased threat range, the fact that you're going to be able to disembark, then move, then charge and wall, you're going to decrease the profiles of all these elite units by just having trucks everywhere. It just makes it so um, that's going to just be a very, very useful tool. I mean, just straightforward. It's obvious. Uh, durability. And so, yeah, I mean, two two turns of that five up invul is great to have. For a feel no pain. For a feel no pain. Armor of contempt yeah, for a, your on mega a, knobs. On a T6, two, two, two up save armor. Mm -hmm. like, you fighting on death if you need to so that way if enemies counter charge you you can still fight to try to fight on death or if you're just going to try to take it you know so enemies just going to interrupt fight you back you know what i might just have to take this punch i'm going to fight with my normal knobs over here first and i'm gonna let you punch my mega knobs i can stand it so it's something that we're not used to for the most part if someone interrupts us and counterattacks us they tend to punch our units away in this case they will not and that feels fantastic um it's actually infantry heavy which is benefit of course there's anti-infantry keywords i'm very familiar aware of that i know that can hurt but it is good for popping through terrain when you have the wall and increasing that threat range which compounds with all the other pros on here yeah yes and then uh yeah just reliable damage output from the wall churn and the stratagems uh gain access to re-rolls is huge um if you have gas the just the five, <laughs> five up crits for two turns like there's going to be some damage output that we have not seen from Oryx this edition. Yeah, being able to get a full reroll to hit um, is fantastic. And of course, getting plus one to hit, you know, from our war bosses and such, we'll enjoy rerolling ones if we have to outside of the wall for our skirmishes. Um, being able to consolidate in certain directions is going to be fantastic. Being able to put mortal wounds from crushing impact into two up armor save models is going to be fantastic as well and useful to us and our knobs and our skirmishing outside of the wall if we ever do anything outside of the wall um yeah and I, I just think that the damage output here is at least quite reliable when you have the cp to do it especially on the wall turn you're just compounding the effect of the wall with the strats it's crazy um but for the cons yeah everything is high value and that's going to be on this detachment so whatever you're exchanging, that's a lot of points you're exchanging for, and it's going to be hard to get your points cost back. Sometimes it is, or just scoring. I mean, just scoring while having all that stuff, right? Um, strats are limited to knobs and mega knobs. I'll just put this as a con, as you already know what you're bringing. The enemy kind of knows what the tech for and what they're bringing as the meta develops and unfolds. And once mega knobs get a straight up points increase or nerf, that just makes a detachment almost unplayable if they get over, if they get over costed it suddenly right right because nothing else is really going to benefit from your strats unless it's those two key yeah words. from what we see now at least from yeah, what yeah. we've seen from aspects <laughs> tactics um we're gonna we're, those guys get yeah of course you get the detachment rule because it's just for war bosses you can the squig hog boys can still appreciate that but i'm speaking specifically of the stratagems they can't appreciate that anymore uh damage reduction hurts against this kind of setup you are going to mostly have damage to army wide just straight up, like I said, with the dread wall, you're gonna have damage three, damage four, stuff like that. You know, a redemptor dreadnought can still be somewhat annoying and in, in stuff in your face, reducing damage like that. Right. This is where the magnabs losing dev wounds is gonna. You're gonna feel that. You're gonna feel them a little bit. Um, not having squig hog boys getting all the army detachments, so they might not even be on the list. You're gonna feel that a little bit, mm -hmm. or just straight volume because that's what they used to do. Um. So yeah. Them being mostly damage too. If all of a sudden later, later, I'm talking about a year from now and codexes, more codexes drop or six months from now, and more people have access to army reduction, and we take a points increase, that could be detrimental as well, right? Yeah. Um, and then lack of trash scoring units. You know, if they just pop your trucks, um, you know, if they just pop your trucks, what else are you scoring with? That's why we have solo snick rod up here, the units to consider, because you don't want to spend time with any of your more elite models doing actions of course your knobs do have pistols um, but knobs aren't really that durable even in this detachment um and their data sheet ability changed so that they're not always minus one to one only if you're greater than them yeah so they're a bit squishier now and you don't have artist nails as a strap to counter that in this detachment 
So lack of scoring potential might be a thing if the enemy understands you're hyper elite and pop your trucks. And you're like, wait a second, how am I scoring now? Um, then you have no shooting support. Your detachment doesn't benefit anything for shooting at all. So at least some of the other ones do, but this one does not. So screens are going to in the way. Everything being hyper elite means that stuff that tries to stand in lanes or delay you is going to be um, taking the charges on sometimes. So or aren't flash kids going to get the map keyword? Um, is that just hopefully, rumor? but I, I think that was rumor, but was I didn't rumor. see that from anything. Um, that would be nice. I would appreciate that, right? Yeah, I just thought about that. Yeah, I mean, they, they pretty much are, are but I think somebody said that they should, but they didn't because um, from what it looks like. So I don't. We'll see. We haven't seen them, but yeah, they. Don't, I don't think they have. Yeah, I don't think so. So yeah, that was it for that. Bully boys looking very strong, but very susceptible to being nerfed. Now we have the big hunt. So big hunt units to consider. I'm gonna say Mazrog. We were talking about. You want more damage, Mazrog is going to be more appreciated, a bit more hidden inside of a unit. Um, the fact that you can get them around the table in different ways is going to be useful. We'll get into that. Beast Boss on foot, I think at least bringing one with proper killy to really take advantage of the dev wounds um, on 4+, plus, having flat damage 3 for that instead. Mm -hmm. Then it actually kind of helps with the Dreadnoughts because if you're going into a Redemptor Dreadnought, you have a damage 3 Beast Boss instead. That guy can actually put damage 2 into him and help drag him down after some mortal wounds chip him down. And then I'm still going to say Gaz can be useful here um, just because they have strats for the critical fives against their target, their hunt target. If their hunt target has reduced damage or it might be a Catan, you'll still appreciate Gaz for that reason, in my opinion. For Makari, lethal and damage and Gaz is straight up five, uh, four damage, right? As for their pros, David. Yeah, they just this probably has the, yeah, the best enhancements for yeah. all of them. They're three good options and one i think that's what most people case. are excited about right the enhancements make you feel like you can do anything <laughs> right they, they make you feel like you can do anything you get sticky you get scouting access you get a built-in minus one to wound you get a plus one damage all of those are viable pretty yeah. much all of them are viable especially uh, meta dependent stuff like that so great great enhancements i really appreciate that very flavorful um, it's good in a meta of vehicles and or monsters. They may be specific to you or what becomes in the future, right? Let's say Imperial Knights get a book or Chaos Knights get a book and we need a direct answer as Orc players to start tearing down these these um, hunt targets. You might see us slowly pivot over into that. At least it's a direct answer and tool that we can use, even if it's not the most prevalent at the start of the release of the book, right? Then we have, I, in my opinion, this detachment's a hard counter to Demon Primarchs. Demon Primarchs like to sit around with the two of safe. They like to bully orcs sometimes. People like to use them to get in your face as an army, or they're the lichpin to their whole army, such yeah. as um, Magnus. Magnus, such as Magnus, and he has good movement shenanigans. So us being able to reroll charges, get charges from the Squigasaur into there, redeploying, um, you're scouting up the table. All of a sudden, we're filling up the table and saying, "Hey, Magnus, we coming for you. Get what's up? What's up?" Right. So Magnus doesn't like that sometimes. Um, Angron typically having a two-up armor save and reduced damage access and being able to come back to life. You just like, "What's up, hunt target?" Oh, and then he comes back again. You're like. How many times do I teach you this lesson, old oh, man? He just punk but again, you know. So I think he they're gonna feel them against if you're having struggles with primarchs, you might end up uh finding this detachment useful. Yeah, I think you're gonna pick those every time you face those armies. <laughs> they that's what they need to do what they want to do in the game. And it's on and, your turn when you pick it. Right. So they can't even see it coming. They just have to hope, like, oh shoot, he might pick it this turn. Am I gonna let him die right now? <laughs> and uh this is gonna kind of this next one's gonna kind of touch on a con. But the big hunt overall doesn't really help you win games. Mm -hmm. Tar uh, targeting one unit in most armies isn't going to help you win the game. Like it's not going to score you points. Uh, focusing too much can put you out of place, out of position. Unless it's a demon prime. Unless it's a demon prime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we have uh, high pressure, good speed, good toughness. So most of your baseline models are going to be good toughness. The Beast Nagger boys being five is cool, but you got the rigs, the squigs, the pigs. Um, so in the, the Beast Boss Quick Sword characters themselves, so all of that feels solid. Um, they're moving fast because they're mounted. You get the scout, like we said earlier, pick units up and return them to reserves. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be good. That's going to be nice. And the enhancements feel good for you get reroll charges built in there. Sticky objectives. So I love that. And I think this is going to be great for team play. 
yes. right? Because it comes it becomes a direct tool sometimes for people in your team setups. I think at 1K games, it's going to feel really good because people are always... Because once the Warlord vehicle or monsters are off the table, then you can just choose character units. So if you're playing a 1K game where someone just doesn't bring a vehicle or a monster, then it's really just their Warlord, then it becomes their character unit. Um, and they have to interact with... They have to put those guys out on the table to be killed because they're most likely the, the majority of their points at 1k and they're trying to play the game so you'll actually benefit from that all the time and in leagues if you're doing escalation leagues starting small and going big you might want to pick the big hunt because at least the first five four games might actually be fantastic for that now for the cons david like you just spoke of yeah so the detachment rule can easily be outmaneuvered by if they only have one vehicle or one monster they can easily just hide that in the back if you're picking the warlord and he doesn't have to be involved necessarily in the front lines yeah you just hide him so you're really just easy to play around. it can be outmaneuvered on certain lists of course people won't see it coming necessarily it's not like they're going to build for that but in your own local meta they might build for that if they see right. you're just running them over the big hunt um so yeah and then i think the answer to that though is just saturation of the table just i got a rig here i got my squigs here i got beast boss on foot here at some point i'm going to get one of those every time in range and be able to chew through whatever's defending it so i think there is an answer for it but it's not easy um you're heavily relying on squigs the pigs um in this detachment so it's one of those things that if they get a little bit over points costed yeah you might just not be able to have enough of them on the on the table yeah right now people are really excited that you can run them in nine and you know they're talking about combos with the glory hog for the scout nine inches and how steven had mentioned earlier you're talking about 500 plus points possibly for that one unit like yes yeah. that's, that's a lot of points it is a lot so we'll see how that looks um low data sheet count pretty much just snagas are going to gain benefits from not only your detachment but your stratagems so you're you are going to be limited for that um besides snake route i would still probably consider it maybe a snake route i guess yeah. um and then lack of skirmish support so outside of your target prey whenever you're trying to kill something else that's on the table um especially on a non wa turn you might struggle you might really struggle for that reason so you're not great for skirmishes your squigs are all important the snagger boys aren't super reliant to anything that has good armor saves or moderate toughness outside of the wa turn um you have to hope the kill rig gives you lethals or gives you enough strength to make a difference in your wound potential for your skirmishes or some last cannons go off right but it's not great there's no there's strats don't help you with your skirmish support really here then you have um hard to maneuver around terrain because you're running big fat bases and the kill rigs um this is going to be another one that's terrain dependent even though it's very flavorful so when i show you an example of the hunt list i have i did int introduce at least one tool for that to try to get around um the, the crappy mobility in my opinion of this this detachment so the big hunt flavorful could be useful we'll see in the future one more last oh. thing about that uh another pro i just thought of right now is if you're a new player getting to 40k and you're just picking up orcs the new combat patrol box that's all beast snaggas so mm -hmm. this is a det detachment you might want to look at just to start out and get your feet wet yeah for sure a lot of people have been collecting them so a lot of people might have them now we have the cult of speed um, I'm just gonna start by saying this is gonna be uh, a key, uh, a lock that needs to be unlocked with a certain key and a certain player. So I'm gonna do my best here, but I think this is going to be new for a lot of us as orc players as a whole, right? Now we have units to consider: Mega Knobs plus Chuck Boy Enhancement. Um, I'm just putting Mega Knobs on there because they're still gonna have their four of feel no pain. But in reality, it could be a battle wagon with boys. It can be knobs with power claws. But the point is, you need something to use the truck enhancement so that you can punch people off you. If you don't throw away turn one, you still need that get stuck in on the wall and have benefit from that, which your truck boy unit will be the one that benefits from that the most. Um, I'm going to say you might want to consider Zod, Grotz, Commandos, Snickra, something like that to infiltrate. If enemy has a scouting unit that can move first and goes first or an infiltrating unit that can get in your way and go first, it can actually, you know, get in the annoyance of all your vehicles and stuff of course um yeah which is there's there's our counters to that but well. yeah the last thing you want is for all your buggies to get bogged down in your own deployment so this kind of complements the style of how this list is going to play is getting that early board pres mid board presence it seems counterintuitive but we'll see going forward there's just a shot in the dark because this is different for us but i think 
people are going to have to realize I need to have assured presence and space to move out because then you're not going to be able to get line of sights with any of your shooting buggies. Uh, you're going to get all stuffed in the deployment zone and then enemies can counter charge you and touch multiple buggies and kill them or just force them to fall back away from their own fr the, the mid table or away from your enemy's deployment, which will stop your scoring potential. Um, and then the Mecha Track Scrap Jet, I think, is because it has a damage three, has mortal wounds on the charge, a moderate good fighting profile. It might be the one profile that does the damage for you, right? Then we have the pros and the cons. All right, with, with the speed you're getting from this, it's going to give you immediate pressure. So you're going to be able to pressure on objectives, uh, pressure your opponent to possibly move where they don't want to move or redirect their own army. Yeah, you're going to kind of be able to use your squig sorry your squigs your buggies or your bikers as bait um let's say you're running a diff killer war trike you can decide hey i'm gonna run up and shoot you and stand here those are things that the enemy might have to go well now i have to kill you because you're in my way with this stupid giant base and this moderately good oc um so it's immediate pressure and um make the enemy think for a bit unusually tough cheap vehicle so the fact that you have access to a strat for a four up invuln um for your small buggies or a truck will be quite helpful most enemy people cannot use their cheap skirmish, you know, basic infantry to punch through your buggies. So you'll be able to stuff them in people's faces, force them to throw their anti-tank firepower, and they might not just have enough. Even between combined arms, they might not have enough for that. So it's an unusual toughness for the buggies, even if they don't um, do the damage themselves. If they chip an enemy unit down enough, they might be able to survive small skirmish clapbacks. Good OC for their point value. So... They do go over the threshold of something like a truck. A truck only has two OC. Guess what? Most buggies have, I think all the buggies have a three OC point. That's good for if you have to deny an enemy, let's say a Sagittar again, Leagues of Ultian, I'm looking at you. You know, their, their transports are known for being super annoying because they're three OC. Um, small other armies' monsters are three OC and other thicker transports or vehicles are three OC. So the fact that our cheap, Garbage buggies are 3 OC, huge bases to block people out from getting on top of them. You might actually benefit from their OC and primary scoring potential or delaying potential. As a whole, this army does have good scoring potential um, because you're fast. You're all over the table with the board presence, denying enemy reserves or deep strikes because you're running around with stupid night bases. You're auto advancing with trikes, uh, sorry, with the trike or the war boss from Forge World on bike. And then you allow your bikers to just run up the side of the lanes right there and just dock people down as well with the awesome DACA strats that they have for sustained or lethal. So that, and then they have twin link on their biker. So that's a good option right there. Um, and then, like we said right here, is another pro move blocking, delaying the enemy. That's going to be a factor to big fat bases. But if the enemy is too enemy, uh, infantry heavy, let's say world eaters and eight bound, they'll be able to tag and chew through some of your delaying and progress. Yeah. So you have to be careful. <laughs> now, the cons. Uh, low damage output. A lot of these profiles on the buggies aren't uh, reliable. They mm -hmm. hit mostly on fives. Fives. Yeah, 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 fives. fives. And and none the, of them are really reliable. Yeah, and the profiles themselves aren't that impressive. None either. of them are reliable. The the rugged truck squig bike, you took a nerf, so it's not even plus one to hit anymore yeah. um, against infantry. They lack AP. They lack a ways to ignore the um, cover. So, yeah, they're just they're there's almost no reliable damage output from the buggies, which is why I think they're going to take a hard learning curve. Uh, lack of melee, right? The buggies themselves don't punch worth anything, really. I mean, it's decent profiles what they look like, but they're hitting on fours and uh, they only have like four attacks. So that's just mm -hmm. not good enough volume. You, you might just do absolutely nothing in combat. So you really are relying on, even though they will not gain benefit from the detachment rule outside of the one enhancement truck boy unit, you might need to bring a, one or two more infantry units um, just so that you can run through terrain, run through terrain and get stuck in or actually punch away people. So that's where you might need a lack of melee and require you to bring things that don't appreciate the benefits from the detachment rule. And it is a unusual way to play orcs. So right now with the index, or if you play last edition, you were relying on buggies either to shoot a buttload last edition, or you're you relying on sustained sixes, hitting, getting stuck in, putting pressure, fighting on death, all of these things. None of this is what applies to the cult of speed. I think it's going to, like it says below that, high skill curve to know when to commit or when to 
commit to damage or when to commit to scoring. There might be situations where you just don't charge anybody. You just stand in front of them. You just try to delay them. You just try to do secondaries. You just try to stat check them with your odd toughness, pop the four up in Vuln. Um, and then on a different unit, you decide I'm going to go for lethal and sustain just to kill this one problematic enemy unit. And then from there, I'm not going to kill anything else. Your turn, right? That might end up becoming the way that the high level players play. Um, and bikers could be kind of useful to help offset that for the killing. So Cult of Spin, um, I know it's hype for the rules, very flavorful. Um, it gives you the ability to use aircrafts, I guess. Some people might tech into that. I haven't been looking into that too much because yeah. um, I'm not there yet. I think the points will make, make that a factor. If you can make a plane like 115 points, maybe I'll consider it. But I don't think GW is going to do that. I think GW hates planes right now. So that's where the cult of speed. We'll see where it goes, especially once we see the points and we re revisit this. But what we're, we're going to get into is the green tide. So I'm very biased for the green tide. I know our boy Steven was earlier on here. I love the green tide. I love um, Big Mobs Boys. It's how I started my 40K venture. So units to consider. Gazgul, again, you need to overcome the fact that you cannot actually punch through things. He has high damage. His lethal capability helps. The fact that he's... Um, Going to bring a couple of mega with him might be useful to you as well. Has an anchor that can actually um, hold a punch and not just loot, die to small arms fire. Um, then you have the weird boy because you need to get the mobility for your moms of boys around the field. And then you have the pain boys because stacking the five up field no pain along with the four up, uh, the five up invuln, as well as regening people and having a strat to regen people is what you're really going to be banking on. So it's going to be hard for me to try to make a green tide without bringing pain boys, weird boys, and war bosses, of course, right? Yeah, it synergizes with how this detachment wants to play. Yes. So uh, with hitting our first pro, you're stat checking here. With the, <laughs> yeah. with the five up invul yeah. and the boys, just mass amount of bodies for the give them the feel no pain as well with the pain boy. And like you mentioned regenning from two different sources. Is there a third source? No. No. Okay. So two different sources. So it's going to be almost similar to the Tyranids Unending Swarm, where you're just going for board control. You're going for holding objectives, uh, scoring fixed secondaries. Remember, the boys do have pistols in combat. So and, if you're standing in the middle and you charge and tag something, you know, tag the boy back, make a conga line backwards, which we're going to on Wednesday. Yes. And you can actually witness how Steven was using boys and other units to score fixed secondaries while playing with big bricks of boys and battle wagons and rigs. And there's some useful strats too to help you out with that, with the extra mm -hmm. consolidation. Um, yeah, but you also, what you have is the surge move. So if people okay. shoot you, you get to move um, towards the enemy. Was it D6? Yeah. And it's Move flat D6. six if you have On, 10 plus models. Yes. And then, uh, yeah. so there, there's that as well. That'll help you so enemies can't just go, okay, I'm going to try to dwindle you down a little bit so you can't re-roll saving throws of one anymore. You're like, what? Surge. <laughs> right? Surge. You know, no, it's not going to work anymore. So I really like that. So that could be an interesting combo. Um, What's if up? you give the pain boy the, um, the enhancement to always count as 10 plus. Yeah. Of so course. Can, Wait, is that enhancement? No, is that? Uh, yeah, I think it is enhancement. Yeah, right? it's an enhancement. Mm -hmm. I think because there's a strat that allows two different units, and then there's also the enhancement. Yeah, a lot of the strats are uh, based off having ten or more mm -hmm. boys. Yeah, the ruckus war car, uh, caller is units always count as ten models or more for detachment rule. Um, some people would say you can actually use this on mega knobs. That mm -hmm. way, you can reroll saving throws of one on your mega knobs because it literally just but, says counts as models. Mm -hmm. So that's a little tricky. We'll, we'll see what the wording says, but you could hypothetically use that because it says unit always counts as 10 models or more for detachment ruling. Some people would argue that we just got to see how that goes, but I think that's cool. But you do also have a strat to count as 10 models plus for two separate units. So they're giving you tools to deal with that. Um, and it's an uncommon archetype. People just won't see it coming. They won't stat check for it. Um, and unlike the Tyranid unending swarm, boys can actually fight you. You know, boys can actually beat you up, especially if you are lower than T10 and you're rerolling wounds. Yeah. Right. Or if you have gas. Or if you have gas. Rerolling wounds against anything that's T9 or lower, you're blowing through them if they're not saving on a two up. Even if they have a three up save, you're destroying them. I promise you, with that many punches. And you have power claws still in there, too. Remember. Um, but let's go into some of the cons, David. Yeah. So 
biggest con is you're limited to boys because <laughs> yeah. only the boys have the boys keyword yeah. not beast naga boys not burna boys just boys yeah i will say of course the second part of that detachment rule is you get to reroll ones for any orc unit that's greater than 10 so i could see an argument for being a couple beast nagas here so you can appreciate gaz's lethal aura a bit better but they are very limited to the boys the strats are limited to the boys we'll see if the enhancements are limited to boys based off what we just said right uh, one thing we didn't uh, mention for a pro is boys now have sticky. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I don't know that's how huge. I, I was super <laughs> pumped about that. I don't know how I didn't mention that earlier. But yes, I'm super pumped that boys have sticky objective. That's fantastic because as you're rolling this green tide over people, then you're just like, all that behind me, that's still mine. You know what I'm saying? So fantastic. You're just going to drown them in the green tide. Yeah, dude. And then there's grots over there just picking up people's guns and stuff. Like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yes, yeah, sorry. And then we'll get back more to the cons. Sorry about that. All right, so they're heavily going to be reliant on these stratagems. And uh, yes, you're going to be CP yeah. hungry, boys. Hungry CP. So even though we said you could do fixed, people might just have to do second uh, tactical if it comes down to you need too much CP to run this. Yeah, it's going to mm -hmm. take some high CP discipline and management to yeah. play fixed and mm -hmm. still you get used to your boys. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, like we said earlier, hard to detain the detachment. Uh, buffs from having 10 plus models some of the strats i think actually require you to have 10 plus models or at yeah. least get better yep like re-rolling all wounds as if it's 10 plus models of course there's the enhancement to help with that there's the strap to help with that but there's stipulations to these strats and these rules sometimes that are like you gotta be over 10 for me to care right so that mm -hmm. matters that matters greatly so you're constantly thinking how can i keep this unit fat thick up but bigger than 10 so you might have to consider a battle wagon for that reason and have somewhat less boys because you might have to keep them alive for turn one for that reason. Um, and then another weakness is they are susceptible to battle shock. Big. So when I was doing my prediction of leaks or talking about the leaks and their first initial le uh, conversation about this, I was like, you need to give me something to not be susceptible to battle shock. Some armies, let's say just Tyranids just going like, Everybody take a battle shock test right now at minus one. You're like, ah, oh, dang it. If you don't have a war bus in that unit, you are susceptible to battle shock. Then you have a neural lictor. You, you know, you take battle shock, you're minus one to wound now, you fail. Ha -ha, and then they definitely kill you because they have a bunch of blast weapons. Um, Necrons have a character, I can't remember his name, but he could just not even, he could just be near you within 18 inches, I believe, and start making you take battle shock tests yep. for two, minus one. So, demons also have it, and um, then they also have the minus one if you're in their shadow of the warp. And there's other armies that I can't think of off the top of my head that they charge you and make you take a battle shock test. What yeah, is that? There's, a, there's, a, there's something that I was just thinking of that did that as well. So, um, you have failing a battle shock test when you are charged is horrific. I think it's, oh, I think it was in Dark Eldar. Um, so yeah. And so just, in, oh yeah, demons have battle shock and chaos knights battle shock. So this is a huge con I was noticing. Uh, weakness to toughness 10, just like we were talking about the knights. So that stacks with the chaos knights. You start getting battle shock. They get better into you. You can't really tear them down any effectively. They have sweep attacks. You just hope they can't kill you quick enough and you hope that you score enough points. So yes. And then you have weakness to 10 and then lack of ability to overcome armor of contempt and two plus armor saves. That's another thing there. So I still think green tide is going to be possible at top tables. I think people can still figure it out. Put a weird boy, hide him in the back, get your jump on, you know, appreciate the strat that gives you plus four to your charges. If it's on the <laughs> battle round four, um, you could do that. I mean, I think you would just need to saturate the table with a lot of boys in that case. You need to practice so you can get the movement down. You need to know when to accelerate and attack, when to just get stuck in and tag. So Wednesday will help. Uh, when we talk about Steven and we actually show what he did turn one against Tao, which was a all gun line get, um, we're going to get into that and we'll show an example of what you kind of need to consider when you're playing a green tide, which I'm still going to run. I don't care. Last but certainly not least is the war horde. So the index was talking about that for a bit. Yeah, so this is the jack of all trades. It's going to give you options, tools for almost any situation and mm -hmm. units to consider. Of course, Gaz, huge improvement in this codex. Uh, five up criticals and during the wall turn is huge but, for a lot of. And the Warhorde is the only one that gives you that as a strap for Unbridled Carnage. So oh, then you're right. just popping that off. Um, of course, the hunt has a version, but that's only for the hunt target. But yeah, right. Unbridled Carnage, anyone. Um, Squigs, 
you know, squigs are just good profile, durable. They got the speed. They're going to benefit from a lot of these stratagems that will later hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, squigs, yeah, maybe he just said that. We'll just continue. Mm -hmm. uh, and then knobs with power claws. We've seen them successful throughout this index uh, dish, uh, period that we've yep. had. So they're going to continue to still be good. They're a staple. Yes. They're a staple. So the pros, great stratagem support. You guys know about that. Fighting on death is fantastic. Guys, yeah. fighting on death <laughs> feels great. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss sustain five pluses. And Kareen is hilarious. So you'll miss it if you ever roll a six and you're like, oh, I wish I had a Kareen right now. <laughs> you know, uh, reliable detachment rule. You know, it's just something that we're all familiar with. Getting sustained sixes, uh, sustained hits on sixes is something orcs will always appreciate because we have a high volume of attacks across all of our data sheets besides Mega Nubs. Um, so you uh, generally, since 8th edition, everybody always appreciate the Goff archetype yes. of sustained hits. Familiar from the index. So anybody who's new, casual, trying to relearn the data sheets, understand the orientation of keywords, you could just stick to this index. You'll still do fine, and you can figure out the new data sheets as you move forward for a bit. Um, and it's an unrestricted detachment. So if you do not have the collection, just like its next perfect uh, keyword uh, pro, is if you don't have a specific collection, as in I have just Snagas, just Max, just Speedwap, I'm a new collector, I have a little bit of everything, Warhorde is going to be your way to go in my opinion. It's the perfect all-rounder detachment if you're building up a collection. That's the straight-up pro right mm -hmm. there. As for cons, hard as nail has changed and does not affect monsters. My double gargantuan squig off. <laughs> right? Rest luckily, luckily, the Mazrog, Beast Boss, and Squigasaur are not monsters anymore, but your squig off from Forge World is a monster, for example. So you're going to be sad about that. Um... Lack of durable distraction units because you don't have the Maz, you don't have the Beast Boss and Squiggle Sword, you don't have the Knob with Wall Banner. You're going to suffer with the War Horde for this reason. You turn one, waiting, going second, waiting is going to suck. Uh, cons, the meta is very much familiar with this strat, these rules, um, how to handle orcs with how they play like this. So if people are familiar with it now, our hard matchups will remain hard matchups. Yeah. So War Horde's still great, but. Uh, we just had to get over it. It is, it is what it is. So I like it. Be grateful. You guys will still be good. Now, we have two lists for examples. Um, not too many, but we, you know, just two to start because I don't want to get too stuck in the weeds without knowing points and exactly what wording is for everything. But here's just, I decided to pick one for the, the hunt and then one for the bully boys to hunt because I think this would be helpful for people that are new and collecting as they have, they're going to have a lot of snaga already in their collection or going to be getting more from the combat patrol going forward and then bully boys because it's going to be the most meta um competitively to start so first we'll start with the bully boys all right we got boss snick rot gasgul you want to yeah I'm, I'm gonna explain actually why each one of these points are here but snick rot because we spoke about earlier this list is so elite and you're trying to score you're going to want Snickra, and you're going to want him to possibly hold your home field objective from indirect fire. Mm. So Snickra's out there redeploying secondary fix, jump into the enemy backfield if they screen you. Let's say they know the double wall is coming, so they front line with all their trash, try to delay you. Well, now they just open up a backfield of boss Snickra for that reason, and you can just score your fixes secondaries for that reason. Gaz Gultraka. Yeah, like we mentioned, huge improvement on his data sheet. Getting access to the five critical, five up critical on the wall churn. He now has his own sweep attack, so he's not as helpless against chaff units if someone tries to tag you. And I, yeah, I, I think gas going forward, like just at a lot of the time, people were running gas. They were kind of staging them, trying to keep them safe because they were minimizing how many mega knobs were with him. There's a real argument to just put five mega knobs with gas now because they have a five of the four up feel no pain on the double wall, yeah. and he has the sweep attack now with plus one to hit, plus one to wound. Goodness, guys, goodness, you could just get stuck in and just crump people with gas now right off the bat. Just start pressuring with him, turn two and three, even um, getting him closer to the enemy deployment zone for that second wall, and then you can get more stuck in and and let your our units disembark from the vehicles and stage a little better. Yeah, he's going to be giving people nightmares with that two up from Akari and the four up feeling pain. 
Yep. Then we have Mazrog Scrag Bag. So Mazrog Scrag Bag is going to stick with Squig Hog Boys. We'll get into it when we get to the Squig Hog Boys. Three War Bosses because we have a bunch of knobs here. A War Boss in Mega Armor. He's over points right here because he's going to have the enhancement um, for the Deep Strike. Dave, you want to continue? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. After that, three trucks. So we can put some knobs, mega knobs in there. Um, then we got two units of Gretchen. Well, actually, the trucks are there too for the SWAT team. So if you're not familiar with SWAT team, when you look at these knob units and these mega knob unit points values, that's why we have a split that way. Sorry, to continue. Uh, two units of Gretchen just for uh, some back backfield screening. Uh, cheap chaff units. CP regen. CP you need regen. It. You're gonna you're gonna need it in this detachment. And then here we got one five man mega knob unit, mm -hmm. which is assume with the war boss. Well, that's the thing right. about this list. We're gonna go through units, and I'll talk about where it's getting plugged in play and why. All right. Mm -hmm. So two three man mega knob units. Then we got two knob units, five mans, mm -hmm. and one brick ten man of knobs. And to round out a squig hug boy unit so the mega knobs in my opinion are you can argue for either or the power claws or the twin kill saws i still like the twin kill saws but if you're going to have um double wah and gas and they're going to be attached to gas unit you might actually appreciate power claws on your big unit and then kill saws for your smaller units right so swat team swat team is when you can actually appreciate the transport capacity of a truck you can put knobs and then a war boss and then three mega knobs in one truck or you can put both five man units of knobs with war bosses into one truck these are more for skirmishes if you got to go out and get into fights with people that are sub 200 points um you can start getting stuck in with those units i still appreciate the minus one to wound capability keep in mind if an, if it's a different matchup where you don't want gaz and his mega knob getting shot up early it's too big of a profile your train doesn't work you could put three mega knobs with gaz instead put five mega knobs with your war boss and mega armor and then use that to deep strike instead or also just put that in a truck if you feel like so these trucks and in reality you could drop one of these trucks and then if, if the points go too off the rails here but you want trucks because they're going to help you score as well and they're mobile safe bunkers so this list is actually built for flexibility of what goes in what truck. The War Boss and Mega Armor is going to have the teleporter enhancement for the deep strike potential. So great for rapid ingress target. Um, if you want, you could put three War Mega Knobs with the War Boss and Mega Armor instead. And then you could put five with Gaz if you want for that mid-table pressure and delivery. So um, if not, you can just put these 10-man unit of knobs with the War Boss in the truck as well. So that's how this list kind of plays out where you can plug and play where the mega knobs go. You can plug and play if you want to swat it up, if you want to put double down in the knobs in one swat or one big knob unit in a swat truck. And then you still have a unit of squig hog boys because they're just nice for their value, their toughness. Uh, we hope for their value at least, but they're good for their, their volume of attacks, their odd toughness. Um, they still have the war boss keyword from Mazrog's scrag bag, but more Mazrog still has his great damage potential um data sheet and everything like that and he's going to be safe within that unit once you chew through the squigs that are going to be in the small four-man unit then you still have to deal with maz on his own and he still has his four up invuln even if he doesn't have the four up in uh, feel no pain anymore so four up invuln on the five of feel no pain on a still pretty thick character who can fight pretty decent moderately well is something you can still consider here um if you don't want squigs and you just want more chaff and scoring that's fine too but this is how we're starting it out because i know most people still have uh, Maserat's grab bag and still have squig so it's a good way to fit it on the list as they get in so this is an example of a list we don't know the points this is from the old points so this might adjust going forward you can drop a truck you can drop the squigs but here's our basic archetype for a bully list but what about the snag kids so this one's a bit contentious because we do have double beast boss on here but you know where we don't know the points yet and beast bosses will help so david yeah, so double beast boss on foot, a beast boss on Squigasaur. We got boss Snickra because, like we mentioned, he's going to be very valuable for scoring secondaries, gaining that loan up keyword now. And the beast boss on Squigasaur is going to have the scouting enhancement in okay. this build. If you want, if Maz is too many points or too similar, you can drop Maz and put a beast boss on Squigasaur with the minus one to wound enhancement. I understand that as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then we got Mazrag, like you mentioned. Well, what's different here about Mazrag is he now moves into the actually reliable 
armor penetration into the killing targets and he can go out earlier or he can go into reserves while the other unit scouts up earlier right so you can either reserve him automatically or if you've been in a situation you just decide you gotta throw him into reserve boom the beast boss of screw start with the scouting potential is going to be the one taking up the table occupying space while masrog can go hunt down a target on his own if it's not a wall turn he now has minus two ap and minus three ap if it's against the hunt target so then he can actually not super rely on his dev wounds that he doesn't have anymore for on five ups now it's just on sixes for his chompa jaws so now his actual fighting chompa being minus two and still being anti-monster anti-vehicle three to four damage is going to be useful and reliable so i still want him on the list because i don't want just damage two all over my list i got you mm -hmm. and then uh zodgrod wartsnaga which i believe this is also part of a little combination you have this here. is a part of a combination as well if you can see on this list we still have one truck this is an old combo but i still think it could be useful on this list as this list is about pressure board control threat saturation um and you want a little bit of scoring right so we have zagra wartsnaga with the one truck with a gretchen unit so that's going to scout as long as this beast boss and squicker sword is going to scout you can disembark them and then choose to try to score a secondary or run up and tag an enemy unit or you just wait for the wall and then get a ridiculous amount of mobility from the wall as it increases and doubles uh I think it doubles pretty much their movement capabilities um you still have the truck just parked up staging shooting if a kill rig gets destroyed the snaggers can jump into the, the truck instead so it's a small profile but it's more scouting potential so you can just get up the table quicker and start tagging and dragging right yeah and then uh two units of beast snagger boys to join the beast bosses mm -hmm. and then we got three gretchen units because one of them is going to be with zod um it's of course contentious if you even want to bring zod if you even want to bring the other beast boss if you even want three gretchen but mind you this is restricted to beast snagger so if you don't you're going to do more kill you can just do another kill rig or you're going to do a squig hog boy unit there's not many other options i just wanted to show the flexibility and 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 points here right because one of these beast bosses is for sure getting the proper kill the enhancement so the second one you might not need but like we said before outside of the hunt target you need something that can still kill other things on the battlefield the beast boss with his dev wounds on the four plus will appreciate that um especially if it's on outside of a wall turn then you have the two kill rigs great for overwatching people great for putting that threat up the table and popping people's uh weaker targets or high elite sorry popping people's weaker vehicles or highly elite multi-wound models so that'd be nice. Also giving the plus one strength to your beast snagger boys or your squigs um, or potentially lethal always feels good. We'll talk about that on Wednesday when we go over our get getting five and oh with two kill rigs on his list. And then we have just two units of squig hog boys. Of course, I know some of you guys are like, I'm just going to go straight three. We don't know the points. And I didn't want to triple down on any of the data sheets going through this, as I think most people have a diverse collection, not a stringent collection. And if they do, they're probably you know just gonna run three squigs anyway so i wanted to show at least two of each data sheet this is how i would portion it out at 2k at current points there is a little bit leftover points in case you get a points increase but this is where we're at right now for the hunt list um i understand arguments for dropping a beast boss adding a rig i'm totally cool with it especially if i have zod for more scouting and freeing up space when i scout and reserve my other squigs right so you can fit more rigs on the table and such so that was our example for our La final list so in summary guys and after this we're going to talk to chat see what you guys got to say fighting fedora i'm gonna fight on deck with my grot every chance i get that's i know cool. you would get that's what you do you better show us your grot revolutionary army because i know we have a bunch of those in discord thank you for grot workshop mech shop for joining the gray war that's what i'm talking about gets i see a lot of you gray gets in here if someone you know gifted memberships like wicked joe did earlier then i appreciate you so collect that turn into a turn into a squig so you know you could be a part of the great wall and use our nice little emojis let me get some more bosses and boys and emojis in chat guys for all you gets um so in summary we're gonna go over the chat real quick see what you guys got to say but this is our first initial reactions it was a bit long but there's a lot to cover there's a lot of combinations and tactics that we can get into um, if chat wants to throw in some of those we can but i'm familiar with them i'm gonna hold back on making all the initial combos until I have the exact data, um, pretty much exact wording for the detachments, exact wording for the uh, the keywords like flash gets. We don't know if they're an object or not, for example. 
Um, and it just gives us more time if we get closer to the points to know more information and then we can start really getting creative with our list design because we got they got time guys codex is gonna last for years essentially at this point because we got mm-hmm. it early in the edition so it's gonna be awesome 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 so yeah, we're expecting those point changes to be end of this month too so it'll be a lot clearer what we can yeah. do what's in the codex right now guys and the points is pretty much almost irrelevant i can see new things like aspect tactics said new things that haven't been uh, shown before like the enhancements from the, the detachments those might be somewhat accurate but the units themselves we're just going to say no they're, they're, it's irrelevant what that comes out digitally is going to be the most relevant points that we have all right so let's see what some of you guys got to stay in chat we'll catch up to what you guys got to say real quick in chat and let me get up to the top because there's a lot of chats here Mm -mm -mm -mm. a lot of walls let's go i need to find out my boys great idea with the mandos well i have a list idea let me see what you guys got to say kid bashing our boys what do you think of using a solo war boss and a beast boss from a transport i think Mm -hmm. a solo beast boss on foot is actually a real thing right the problem is what are you actually trying to kill with that um, you're more assisting in killing something, which means then it is susceptible to the counter interrupt from the enemy target. That's the one thing I noticed about a beast boss. As for the solo war boss, nah, I think the solo war boss, the mega armor, arguably in the bully detachment, bully knob de- detachment, if he has deep strike, you know, if he's not limited to he has to be in a unit to do it, then I would say maybe him as well because he's thick and he has damage three on the wall. So possibly there that is on the wall. Is it all the time on the wall? I forgot what it is. For, what? For the, the War Boss and Mega Armor. But yeah, that's what I would say. I think it's a real thing. Um, but I think Snick Rot is where it's supposed to be. Um, they're probably making out. We are cousins. Um, but I'm I'm glad you were excited about that. Um, that that's really interesting. So yeah, we were delayed a little bit just because it was new for us and we were setting things up a little delayed. So sorry about that. Thank you for Devo for welcome to the Great Wall. That's what I'm talking about. Of course, Wicked Joe is an MVP here. One of the biggest, baddest gets we got around. Yeah, he I'm sure he's a, at least a Death Dread right now, right? Or greater because he's been around. I think for he's a close, bit. yeah. Yeah. So wait till he's a Death Dread stopping around. I'm glad you're watching live. Thank you, Gits. He says, I'm happy to be here with all the Gits that have been here since the beginning of the Great Wall. Right. Y'all, the real MVPs. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Um, exactly. This is about this is about the Great Wall, guys. And yeah, sometimes we're a little late, but you know is what it is because we're learning to what we're doing this and then let me see what you guys talking about pants that's cool um i like purple that's where my army is so just so you guys know i'm is purple um and then you could take the enhancement for count of 10 models on any infantry if you look you can give mega not okay yeah that's what we said earlier but we have to see that it's the correct wording once we actually get to see right like the you know that we're actually allowed to do that yeah, we actually do have a lot of, we actually have channels for each detachment as well. So if you want to talk about specifically one detachment, uh, we actually have channels for each detachment. We broke it down because we're in exclusively orc discord and channel, not oversaturated with everything. It's just orky and that's how we like it. Um, Alan, I look forward to the green tide. I always used to play with list of 150 <laughs> models. I started playing last edition when they raised the points on all orcs. I couldn't make that list anymore. Well, the green tide's perfect for you. You get that's what I'm talking about. I was the same way. When I started 40K, I just had like, like 80, 90 boys and then gas. And I would just take a box and just drop them on the table. And be like, mm, whatever, 8th edition, let's go. Um, dude, yeah. Not going to lie, 120 grad sounds like a pain and a blast to play. Yeah, you're just pretty much moving them and moving trades, just pushing them <laughs> forward. Dude. Just whatever, dude. What's up, man? All my grads, because you, you can do a list of three by eight grot tanks with 120 grats with one or two characters with a couple mech guns boom that's your whole list and that's a real list it's a real list right now i don't know if it's awesome but it's a real list um my war gonna have so much fun with the two kill tanks that's what's up two kill tanks he said and something i didn't say about each of these detachments um do have an excellent job is playing as fluffy as they can be as someone who's played since fourth edition that has not always been the case that's very true it's not always been the case i think eighth edition did a decent job but ninth edition felt very restricted and everybody ended up playing free buddhas or goths that's pretty much the only thing we play ninth edition so this book feels way better way better right you said so in a sense in a pickup gains and varying lists 
not in the i think speed freaks are funny so i'm playing on buggies <laughs> yeah exactly and then war hordes awesome he says i like the dread mob has the dread mob still has very real option of just sticking a mech into some knobs some boys and then make them an infantry melee threat in a normal vehicle focused army yes very true you can put them with knobs and try to get knobs up to that damage three as well so that's what the strength of that detachment was and it's one of the few ways that we can offer damage higher than two to get over damage reduction which is one of the strengths we put into the pros and cons of the detachment um so that's very true is there something you've seen david um no at some point you're gonna address the giveaway too oh pff, we'll do that now all right you, you get so we did a uh giveaway to celebrate hitting 2,000 subscribers I know we're a little late on it, but I was giving people the chance to enter by commenting on the video when we uh, came out with the leaks a few weeks ago. So I'll announce the the winners now, and I'll also make a post and you know reach out to us. What we're giving away is uh, some shirts because at the time there was we didn't have any news on when the combat patrol box and the battle force box were actually going to come out. So. I'm going to read out the winners, and like I said, I'll post it again and reach out to us so we can get you those shirts. All right, so we got Dr. Dots, 8878. Congratulations. Uh, World Eaters, 3741. Uh, Yeltz Memo. Oh, Yeltz. Oh, yeah, it's me, Matt, 89. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to read his words. And I'm like, oh, no, it's okay. Then we got the clip. Congratulations, mm, the clip. Let's go. Yeah, we met him at Adepticon. It was cool to see you, uh, Devin Rogers, J Hugh seventy eight. Get this has been here since the beginning as well. Uh, Palestin, Rock Lobster, Johnny G, and Ayakapo. Oh, so, I cop and the clip. A few gets that I really appreciate. I got that and some of the new ones. So it's fantastic. Shout out to you guys. We'll also announce the winners probably in Discord, Facebook. Make yeah. sure they see them as well. Let's let go. Yeah, and thanks, everyone, for supporting us. It means a lot. And love all the Orky boys here together. Yeah, I think we topped at about 88 viewers or something like that. Fantastic. That's another high point for us. And the guys that are still here, thank you very much to all you gets. It means a lot. There's so much we can cover here. We're going to go more into the combinations, like with the mech boy and the knobs and such and the characters. But I think we have a lot of time. Um, once we get the points to really get into all of these lists, I wanted to cover just units, ways to think and play, things to look out for when you're list designing and painting your models. So I wanted to focus on that. I hopefully give you guys a more fun, but still information, uh, informative understanding and conversation about the codex before we get too technical and everything, right? Because that's what the future comes. The future is all technicality and tactics. And we have Jay Hume with five one oh, tactic oh. memberships. Whoa, let's go. If you a gray git, you a gray humey, turn into a runty squig. Let's go, or, or a runt or a squig, you know, because you start off as a, a, runt. a runt, a grot, and your little badge, and then you become a squig, you can become a boy and a knob. So, thank you very much, Jay Hewn. I appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys grab some of that stuff up. Let's go. So, um, I'll leave that up for a second. Let's see. He goes, DDP says, I want to know how many squig bombs can I bring so you get two uh you get one per we'll say box or four minimum size model count of squig hog boys and then you get another one if you turn it to two so for a eight man unit of squigs you would get two so you could unload a lot of uh mortal wounds mm -hmm. with a squig hog boy unit <clears throat> yeah in the big hunt yeah with the strats and the, yeah but that's that's the they thing got, I believe wound. they got the grenade keyword Mm -hmm. too. They, they should still have the grenade keyword they have the charging from the only mounts have access to that and then on the wall you get three additional b6 so yeah they have a lot of mortal wound potential i would love they made war bikers battle line i know right oh. right red ones go faster is that red ones go faster the youtube channel or is that just a guy? Uh, I don't think so. Spell different. No, it's spelled different. It's just I think he just thinks they go faster. Um, <laughs> shout out to Red Ones Go Faster YouTube channel. Great hobby. Uh, wait, so Snickra has loan up now. Was that previewed somewhere or leaked? Yeah, Auspex Tactics put that out on his long two-hour video. That's what he put out. He had a bunch of the leaks and information. I don't want to do just a re-video comp of him exactly and just taking everything he put up and reiterating it. 
because he has great editing skills, presentation, just for straight information. But there's a lot of things we could extrapolate and learn from that. So that's what we chose to do instead. Yes, he has loan op. I'm glad you noticed that. Morning, lads. Glad that I'm uh, rare that I'm awake here. We start a little bit later and it's a bit longer stream. But, you know, we do kind of long streams often. So every Friday, we they tend to be a bit longer, anywhere from an hour to three hours on Friday. So I'm glad you're here. Nice to see you, Music Drive. And you got gifted a membership. Let's go, Music Ooh. Drive. Let's go, Became a Gift. Welcome to the Great Wall. Um, Just pre-ordered the Codex Stompa Boys from gw it's up in australia that's cool. awesome yeah i'll be do, i'll be pre-ordering my codex uh battle force box so you can go over it i won't get the stompa box because i already own a stompa it's fully based and painted um and i already own five trucks i think right now so um, i don't think i want need them yet but i am getting the combat patrol box yeah and from that we'll we'll get into that one so now that we have some rules what do you think of the combat patrol box I think for its value, the you know, I think it's kind of known that the value of the models themselves per dollar per currency um, is less um, because you, you do lose out on like a Def Dread vehicle or your Def Coptas. Right. Um, as for the rules, uh, the rules, I think having squigs with easy access to more characters and be snagger boys on foot is nice because if you ever now just buy a kill rig, you are going to want snaggers for that kill rig or if you're running the hunter rig. Um, if you're going to hunt specific, that helps a lot because you just get two of those and then you can just start building off that for kill rigs um, and other stuff. So it's solid. Yeah, they made it fairly easy to mm -hmm. uh, get into the big hunt mm -hmm. pretty quick with, you know, you buy two combat patrol boxes, one or two kill rig boxes and bam you're ready for a 1k one one and a half k game and i think that's kind of the where big hunt's gonna thrive i don't think people brought that up enough i think big hunt's gonna thrive at 500 1000 1200 those kind of points values when people are learning and building out their their rules and getting the uh the battle force box or they got the box from last year christmas box i think it was so yeah i think in general the big hunt it might end up being awesome competitively if the meta changes for sure um but at the moment i think just straight out the gate it's good at like thousand point games which is yeah. why it's actually a pretty good uh pickup then he said i want to run a cult of speed detachment but i'm unsure which units to include to take down heavy targets mega knobs trucks boys out of a truck or battle wagon also maybe a death dread a strength 12 claws yeah that's gonna be the the that's gonna be the question that we need answered as a whole because there's no direct easy answer for that truck mob if you're talking about high toughness but not huge model like uh, wound count you could always just say i'm gonna bring a beast boss for his dead wounds outside of the wall to punch something with beast naga boys there um but as for that yeah maybe a death tread just because there's already a lot of vehicles on the table for its damage three um but battle wagon can actually hold up the trucks will at least get their four up in so they'll be al alive that's why i kind of think the bat truck might work because you get invuln smaller profile mega knobs can get out um the thing about just basic knobs is that they still struggle into toughness we'll just say 10 or greater units to a certain extent right so knobs might not be the answer there but mega knobs because they'll be able to run up hurt it stand there feel no pain in on the wall turn they might actually be the best option that's why i put them in that keyword but it is something right rockets maybe <laughs> all right um so yeah with with lethal a lot of shots getting into this combos and synergies i think the most exciting thing for me looking forward to all the theory hammer coming in the next few weeks exactly so we have weeks of theory hammer coming forward so of course we're not gonna have the points for a couple weeks so this is my initial reaction and then we'll get into combos for the next week um and maybe more specific details for keywords or the enhancement, like the actual pages get released, hopefully, and then we can all see them. That would help into actually being able to make combos and not be like, I think it works like this, right? right. So, yeah, there's a lot to play with here, so it's going to take a lot of games, yeah. a lot of commitment. <laughs> yeah, we see another, uh, what was it, a uh, billion dollar pound farm where he was just kind of like, I don't know what to do, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> like, you know, like he was, dude, he was so pumped. And that's how it felt for all of us going into it. It was like there's so many options where do i take this what am i using what's up so i i felt that same way and that's why we're going to be able to talk about so many different combinations between planes like you said a docker jet mm -hmm. docker jet might be interesting as it has a speed walk keyword 
uh auto hit crits ability and give you plus one lethal uh sustainer lethal for one cp yeah and maybe the woo the was boom uh daca jet or was boom blasted jet might become another option for that because it does have big high heavy firepower so that might be something for destroying high toughness things what should i grab for but grabbing a speed freak list i've got one of each buggies i just ordered 15 copters the 18 <laughs> dev cop the meme is real um i want to think the dev copters can be useful i'm not sure if they will but hey they really i'm like um they, they'll definitely appreciate sustained or lethal but you gotta hope you actually hit it's like dang it doing god i get it um what should you get well you need bikers you definitely need bikers you need bikers um you know they have the built-in assault they have the volume of shots and they can kind of jump into and clear chaff when your buggies might not actually be able to do that reliably with their damage output um if it's an actual buggy you want more buggies of i'd say the mega check scrap jet or if you um don't have a truck yet and just want to put something into that you might need an elite combination unit coming out of the truck or even just straight up boys or a battle wagon so prioritize it as bikers then um maybe mega track scrap jets stuff like that oh maybe they just yelled at you oh what can we get a codex giveaway uh i mean now that it has been announced because when we did this give can david win please <laughs> <laughs> he wants me to play orc so bad i mean i'll probably have to because there's so much so many options and i'm, I'm yeah. gonna have to help out eddie get some research done yeah but uh, you know, we do want to make now that we, play the green tide. <laughs> <laughs> now that we do have an, uh, pre pre orders tomorrow, we are gonna do a future giveaway. Uh, once we hit three k, we'll do it again. It's just this time, three weeks ago, we didn't have any of this news. We didn't have leaks. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We had no idea when this was gonna come out. But yeah, we'll get on that for sure. That's a good shout out. Thank you, Fighting Fedora. Very generous of you again for a super chat. Thank you, buddy. Love it very generous now we have combat patrol is less useful for a new player coming in but really good for expanding a existing collection no monopoly boys is a plus uh i don't know i felt like i felt like the other i think the other way around i think the other combat patrol had no synergies the war boss and mega armor can't even join the normal boys yeah the death dread is just one solo death dread and then the death copters have mobility but you know they don't take you anywhere that you need to go and deaf coppers don't do anything other than really score points right now they're not like a damage unit i think this combat patrol allows you to actually go okay i can do two of these and i can start playing a game with a detachment that has synergies all these units go together they help each other and then i get one kill rig type thing so i think it's the other way around to respectfully disagree yeah i would say it's just good for expanding a collection because these snaggers have been pushed for the past year or so mm -hmm. so there's been a lot of variation of the boxes with these same units in them but yes yeah, still still good option for both yeah players. and wicked joe started 10th edition he had the stompa oh. box um that's a definitely grab because everybody gets a stompa eventually so you might as well get it when it's the cheapest and you get trucks and looters alongside it yeah clown the clown farm is a good channel of course that guy has great hobbying skills Tyler Russo was saying Cult of Speed might be a sleeper detachment. Buggies, data sheets might be weak, but advanced fallback, shoot, charge. Every list is going to run dragsters and scrap sheets. Yeah, because Tyler likes to play pretty much strictly competitive from what I understand too. Um, and he was really into the truck spam list when it first started. So he was already understanding, hey, I can move block with these trucks. I can score. I can do this. And that's kind of something we covered as well that I think is going to have a steep learning curve. Um, and I think it's going to be one of those things that you're going to be putting up points We'll say in an odd way, it might be similar to a green tide where really you're just all over the place, tagging, grabbing points, slowly dying, trying to control your rate of attrition, um, only throttling where you can with the strats, killing just enough so they can't get you off them fast enough to, to drown people in points. I think that's going to be the real play to play the speed walk. Um, that's why he's saying it's a sleeper pick because that's in theory how we can think about it competitively. We just don't know exactly how that's going to work on the table. And that's really what he was kind of he didn't explain it like that but that's what a, you know the way i see it and i can assume that's what he means too so um because movement wins games yes it does so hoping for some points drop especially flash gets and the stompa especially the stompa for real <laughs> not expecting it to be competitive but i really want to see a mech boosted stompa and a dread mob with full strat support yeah for real dude uh the stompa might just go hard if people don't bring anything you know, they kill it fast enough and the sound is like, do, 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 do. just laying on all the docket. So for sure, for sure, dude. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I, at some point just for fun, I'm gonna run Stampa, Gorkanat, Morkanat. What's up? Like that's it. This will be mostly just the whole list, and then all grats after that. Just fill up the table with grats. Um, a peel box. I will start setting David Screenskins. I'll send Wa Tactics War Boss conversion. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, Wom! Yeah. Shout out to Wom. He made an actual uh, Wa Tactics model that he converted himself and painted up to be just like our little our logo. Um, logo. That was fantastic, <laughs> dude. I love one of those. I was super happy about that. I freaking showed my girlfriend even. Mm, he said Torv, more bikers order. Yeah, oh, dude, more yeah, bikers. <laughs> Dang, bro. <laughs> All right, cool. I mean, you asked. I guess it's true. Yeah, yeah I think war bikers are gonna be where it's at because you need just other stuff and the war bikers do have ablative wounds that are nice because they don't and they don't just fall over to enemy skirmishes and fighting they tend to stick around longer than people expect auto advancing six is going to feel good even though everything's advancing you want something that can for sure move auto six to create space for the other stuff so you need a you know a death killer war track or a war boss and on bike for that um my fiance endorses the stream we got to think of a thoughtful surprise for the channel i must wall ask wall is 40 boys a solid solid for a war horde or am i cool with 30 close to finishing a brick um i think both are fine interesting you brought that up because wednesday we're going to be going over that where he was specifically using the war horde and he used 60 of course he doesn't have the knob with wall band anymore but you could see how you maximize and use those movements putting them in a battle wagon will be useful but even in a war horde because you can get follow up lads and here we go as a strat you can still cover distance with them as long as you're not dealing with indirect and stuff like that so i think it's solid boys are great especially because they are sticky now mm, i freaking love that Anyway, anyway, and thank you for and thank you for endorsing your fiance endorses the channel i love that you guys are you guys are lovely thank you i appreciate the kind of words it motivates us it keeps us helpful and it keeps us um motivated and, and strong with wa energy i don't think i don't think that stampa boys is worth the 209 price tag i think if you plan to get a stampa it is because the stampa itself is kind of there but i can understand the argument i just think at some point you're gonna you're gonna get it. Um, it's a collector's stampa. piece. It's a collector's right. piece. But I can, I get exactly what you're talking about. I really do. Stampa potentially nasty. Yeah, I think Stampa is potentially nasty. Oh wait, fighting Fedora's. Oh. Hold on, I'll get back to you, Johnny. But Fedora's trying to talk to David. For those who don't know, David, David plays gits. Yeah, David started off as because David and I. Dave's my cousin again. For you guys, to say so. David and I started 40k at the same time, along with my other cousin Christian. And it was, we wanted to be nemesis to each other. So we have, I was orcs. So David, of course, was space wolves. So it was space wolves because he wanted a space Viking get stuck in. And then Christian didn't know what to do. So he was neck rounds and we just beat him up and laughed at him. <laughs> so, you know, we, we got, we learned combat and he was like trying to, remember we tried to charge you back in the day with yeah, like he, warriors? He charged me, he charged me with his uh, tomb blades into um, Wolfen. No, it was into Bjorn. Oh, into Bjorn. <laughs> So he didn't understand what he was doing. Now, shout out to Christian. He's a great player now. But, no, but it was very helpful to get those reps you know, just with each other because yeah, we liked each other. and We all learned at the same time. There was no tension or aggression. It was awesome. Um, And he goes, am I crazy or can't you have 25% smaller detachment in your main detachment list? Oh, yeah, there's allies. Special. No, he's talking about for allies. No, because those aren't allies. No, I'm pretty sure unless I miss something. No, that's no, not so correct. usually no. those type of rules are uh, an additional rule for your detachment or for your army. So I didn't see anything like that in the, the leaks. Yep. Oh, I was planning to use solo war bosses and beast bosses as a missile. I'd say limit that to just beast bosses. Um, the war boss will only benefit from a wall and he has crap fighting on side of the wall. And he hits on threes innately without a lead unit to lead. So I'm going to say the beast boss on foot. And he has the feel no pain. He has a sweep attack. He has the strength. He has his damage 10 profile um, at minus two, two damage as well. And he has a sweep to still punch people out. So I still think the beast boss on foot's better for that. Just bring three of those instead. Will you be making up some lists for the new detachments? Yeah, of course. I have to play them more. Uh, a lot of us already kind of have ideas like Tyler was thinking, I don't know. He he just showed the bully one that he you know was talking about everything as a whole because there's just so much to kind of take in. And we need to be specific about what the detachment really says and the keywords for everything. Be accurate. 
Um, but we can all hypothesize, right? Do I want to put a mech that can re-roll advances with my knobs so that I can potentially have, um, you know, access to the to sane and lethal from my knobs? Yeah, that sounds pretty sick, you know, so there's definitely those as well. Uh, we'll talk about all of those combinations as a whole. I think right now we're all just ingesting the book as for what it is. I think Auspex put his video out last night and the rules came out last night. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, for people that it's not night, like, what was it, 20 hours ago, maybe? Right. So, so um. We're planning on coming out with uh, videos touching specific detachments in the future once we have some research and some games in. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, part of our community streams, which we do once a month. Uh, when we started the channel with the index rules, we were doing a lot of list theory making mm -hmm. and giving you guys feedback on lists. So that's probably something we'll bring back now that there's so much flavor and so many options to do with the orcs. Oh, Ooh. speaking of. I found some teeths for your boss yeah let's go Whoa. for the very generous uh super chat 20 that's probably one of our biggest and that's at least in the top three of our biggest super chats ever you so thank name, you man. very much murder orky tank commander <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, that's a great name and i like the the picture too yeah that's dope literally a, a do um a tank a lehman rust got looted it looks like that's fantastic. So thank you very much. Very generous of you. And yeah, I'm collecting all them teeth, boy. I got a lot of gets to get and uh, to kind of roll, round out my collection a little bit more and get painting again. So we'll be doing that. And like David was saying, we would do fix, kind of fix our list concept things. Um, when we do our fix our list videos, um, we actually like to have context to what you actually own that you're willing to replace it with. So instead of you just sending a list and then us just being like, well, you should just bring Max Squigs, right? Like, yeah. we're going to actually say, hey, tell us what you have when you send us the list, what you have as alternate options, and if so, a budget of something that you're willing to add to your list. That way we can give you contextual advice when we do our fix our list videos, just so you guys know. Right. So we'll be doing those on our hobby stream. And just so you guys keep in mind, we have a um, we have our, our live streams every uh, Wednesday and Friday. Of course, today we were a little late, but we have this every Wednesday at 7.30 and a Friday every 8.30. 7.30s tend to be kind of meta discussions, um, list covering from people who performed at events. Because the index rules aren't going to be as relevant right now and combinations aren't, we're going to be doing other tactical videos such as what we're going to talk about with the turn one from Peter and how he used the green tide. Steven. But then Steven, sorry, I don't know. I said that I was reading Peter somewhere. And then Fridays, we typically Fridays are like our tactical videos, our hobby stream, stuff like that. So everything we do, we do it live. If you see any of our other videos, they're pretty much all live as well that they're done. So any feedback or points of interest, very helpful. Chrome Gaming here. I disagree with everything said tonight. Whoa, let's go. That's yeah. what I appreciate you. You get, and that's a <laughs> I know that's, that's that. an awesome profile picture. That's too. Another profile that's people. A, Thank you. Metaru from Hunter Hunter. Yeah, the Metaru. That's fantastic. So shout out for that. I uh, I, I love the humor <laughs> behind that. I know what you're talking about. I'm not gonna say nothing, but I know exactly what you're saying with that. That's hilarious. Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> that caught me off guard, dude. That's so funny. Oh my god! Yeah, we'll we'll see what um what other opinions you have, Crumb Gaming. So shout out to Crumb Gaming, <laughs> Cornstarch for that. Whoa! <laughs> and then Fat Man, uh, they think painting themselves green makes them as hard as the boys, but we knows you gotta be green on the inside too. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, was he talking about over here? Oh, he, oh, I get it because they were talking about the. He said, "I'm excited to try Hog Jail because we're getting kind of like how the." Space wolves. The space wolves yeah. do that. So then red ones go fast. Go space wolves aren't orc nemesis. Orcs love putting space wolves. They're the ones of the few beakies that put up a proper scrap. Yeah, but they hate us. And they will, you know what I'm saying? And they look forward to fighting us. We look forward to fighting any beaky. Anybody that will stand there and get stuck in with us, we're we're happy about it. And people don't actually, or people don't realize orcs don't necessarily hate other factions. They really don't. Orcs don't really feel that the emotion of hate all the time. They feel aggression, they feel anger. They feel the need to fight, but they don't hate you for fighting. They don't hate you for existing. 
They're not, we'll say xenophobic or they're not hate. They're not zealous like the Imperium, right? For the most part, orcs just want the experience of the fight. If you ever listen to Gaz, you know, and the, the, he runs around and he announces to the planets that he's invading, we're coming, get ready. We want a real fight. You know what I'm saying? That, you wouldn't do that if you hate someone, right? You just snake him from behind or something. You'd act like an Eldar. So, yeah, and, but I'm saying they also had the um, psychic awakening boxes and stuff back or books back then, yeah. which had base wolves and orcs in one book with additional rules for anybody who's new here um, for that. So that's also why we did it. And the fact that we both wanted to sh fight and not just shoot also helped have they were a nemesis because then we just learned how to do the combat phase proficiently instead of just getting shot off the table in 8th edition or when we're first learning 40k which is I think very common for people when they're first learning 40k to just get shot so David picking another combat army as well as me and us being able to just pay attention to how to pile and consolidate everything like that was very helpful so thanks for that so I think we'll end it there you get that was a uh, that was a very long fun conversation and we're going to have plenty more with combinations tactics uh corrections of you know updated keywords stuff like that proper insight join us wednesday where we talk about you know tactics that were used to go win five and oh in a gt we just pretty much taking advantage of boys battle wagons and kill rigs right understanding proper piled in consolidates tag and grab scoring secondaries it's going to be a great learning lesson for you guys in the meantime as you hobby on and build towards whatever detachment you're going to be using in the end and the codex so we're all happy about that and you know this is just the beginning of the rise of the great wall you get so there's always one thing to keep in mind is don't cross our wall because we knock your teeth out oh.